Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back for another brand new video and it's actually the second video of today, believe it or not ladies and gentlemen, but you're getting double dosage today or what's more likely people is there's not a single human being that's watching this video as YouTube doesn't support or promote two videos when you upload them on the same day so there's a very high chance I'm sitting here talking to myself. I mean, that's technically what I'm doing right now, but you know what I mean, there is a difference. I know I don't actually do this or that anymore or mention it too much, but if you are here because of the way YouTube does work, if you don't mind hitting the like button and drop my comment down, that should hopefully help it eventually feed, maybe tomorrow or something like that, any other people's recommendations, that'd be greatly, greatly appreciated. But I asked you earlier, would you still want another video and you all said yes, so there was a large majority of you, I should say. There was no comment saying no, at least. Some people left it blank, maybe that was a no, but there was a lot of yeses, so that's why I'm here today, right now, is we have a game upon the horizon. That's right, it's not just transfer drama and all that stuff that's gone around. There is still important, there are still big games coming thick and fast, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in to this bad boy, and as always, we will start off with the old oppositional preview and have a look at the side who is sitting 11th in the SPFL. It's none other than the stubborn commander. Now, right off the bat, people, I imagine there'll be some of you, if you have seen this video, that's currently scratching your head saying, wait, you've just said 11th in the table, which is, of course, second last, and you've used the word stubborn at the same time. That doesn't really make any sense to me, CJ. Are you finally starting to lose whatever marbles you had left, son? Well, look at the sideies. I'm still ill. The problem is the high likelihood. I am heavily medicated right now. But there is a reason I say they are stubborn despite where they actually are. Because there is two different Kilmarnocks, ladies and gentlemen. There's the Kilmarnock that plays at Plasticville. And no, I'm not talking about LA. I am talking about Rugby Park. And there's the Kilmarnock that plays at every other stadium in this league. And it's two completely different sides. Because at home... At Rugby Park, they are a very good side. I mean, this is a side that's lost just three of its 11 home matches this season. That's a pretty impressive record to have, to, have, to be in the SPFL and caught a bit with that. Yet still, you're sitting 11th in the old SPFL. I mean, they've only lost one of the last nine home matches. That's even more impressive, and I think paints it in an even better light, showing you the stubbornness that we actually mentioned. But when you peek behind the curtain, when you see who the Wizard of Oz is, people, you go, oh my goodness, because away from him, it's completely different. They've lost four of the last five away games, and it's completely different in terms of how they go forward and how they go about their business. Business, sorry, they're averaging eight shots away from him, and they've only scored five goals in all competitions. Meanwhile, at him, they're averaging just over thirteen shots a game, and have scored fifteen shot, eh, fifteen goals. Sorry, so you look at that. What a difference that actually makes. And it's the type of difference, people, and it's the type of stuff that you see that makes you sit back and say, all right, is that all the stuff about plastic parks actually out there? Because this debate will continue to rock and roll if a team's so good at their own park like that and so absolutely barking everywhere else, apart from when they eventually play Livingston. <laughs> nah, there will always be people that point to that, but maybe they're just a really good side at playing at home because they know exactly what they're going to do, and away for him, they've actually got to push it a wee bit more, and they actually need to try a couple of things, so it depends how you look at it, ladies and gentlemen, but unfortunately, we won't be playing the away Kilmarnock that has less shots, faces more shots on goal, gets beat all the time. We will be facing the, st uh, the, the stubborn Kilmarnock side who does get shots, who does limit opportunities, and who have hurt several teams this season as fate would actually have it, but probably the most relevant and important talking points regarding Kilmarnock because of course, the weekend, because we know how we felt, we won our semi-final and the, the explosion, the excitement, blah, 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 whatever you want to call it, we felt as a team, well, Kilmarnock was also playing at the weekend, but they aren't smiling like we are people, no, they are absolutely devastated and frustrated because you can lose a game losing is part and partial of the game, people. But the way Kilmarnock did, you can understand the frustration. They are coming into this game versus Rangers absolutely hopped up on piss and vinegar. People, they are fuming at the way that they were robbed in the last couple minutes of that game. With the game 1-0 to Celtic, Giamakis goes behind the Kilmarnock boy and administrates what can only be described as the master lock 
on a Kilmarnock player. It was a clear penalty kick. And this isn't a CJ the Rangers fan. This is just CJ. You know what I mean? This is if you were just asking me at football and I didn't care any of the teams, I'd look at it like that. I'd say it's clumsy, it's lazy, it's a forward challenge. It's a, re- it's, a, it's a penalty kick every day of the week, especially in a semi-final. You expect the referees to actually be on their game and at least consult VAR, but it never wrote it. And it shows you how cool football can be. There's the same person who should have gave the penalty away that would have allowed Kilmarnock to get back into the game and push their own extra time. Ended up going up the part less than 126, eh, 120 seconds later, sorry, and putting the ball away for the second time to wrap up the game 2-0 for Celtic. That's how cruel football can be, ladies and gentlemen. But aye, we couldn't be facing a side that's more motivated than we are right now because that's all the players are talking about. They've been very vocal on social media sharing clips of this, talking about the referees, talking about VAR. Derek McInnes is speaking to everybody who will talk to him about how frustrated he is and everything like that. So, ah, we're not exactly facing a Kilmarnock side that got a wee hard luck story and feeling a wee bit down for themselves. No, this is a Kilmarnock side that is absolutely fuming and feeling robbed people. So, I, I don't think we need to worry about motivation or intensity coming from a side who just lost a semi-final. But, as we've already mentioned a couple times, in today's video, they are a completely different side away from him than they are at him. But their shape doesn't change too much. There will be a free at the back tomorrow. The only slight thing you should look out for is what they do with the rest of the old chess pieces. Because again, Celtic at the weekend, they played a 3-5-2. And they actually played pretty well, in my opinion, and created opportunities and actually committed men going forward, of course, being a semi-final, being behind, you have to actually do that, etc. But the majority of the season, they're playing more of a 3-4-2-1, which I actually think will be similar to what they want to do versus Rangers tomorrow, because that just gives a little bit extra protection out wide. And if you think about how we play with the way we go forward with the fullbacks and what Michael Beale wants from our fullbacks, I think the 3-4-2-1 will suit Kilmarnock better. It's a formation they've used a lot, and I think they'll double up on our fullbacks and uh, Armstrong will be the important player for them in terms of getting the ball at his feet, wee wiggles here or there, fire, win set pieces, get it into the box and of course you've got the long direct ball to Vassell any time he's in on around the area, just keep him the centre backs honest, that's how I think they'll line up, that's how I think they'll play and again there's you can't question why they wouldn't play to their strength which is aerial duels, they, they almost lead the league and winning the ball up there and attacking the set pieces. What we crap it? Don't like it. And I that's kind of all I really good to say from the second update regarding Kamarak. They're a big, honest, hard-working side. You know exactly what you get for them. And I know we always joke about Derek McInnes and everything, but he can set his team up and he can get a wee bit extra juice for his players when he actually requires it. And I'm sure he will be motivated because, again, how vocal he's actually been and never like out there attacking referees, attacking this and that. So there will be some certain spotlight on this game and they'll be looking to spoil the party, especially considering how important these points are at home for Kilmarnock because we know how bad they are away from him. If they, if they continued their away form and their home form, they would be rock bottom. They would be going back to the championship, but it's the home form that's given them a fight and opportunity, people. So, aye, it's going to be a time-wasted grey turner, but again, that shouldn't surprise us. And this is normally where we talk about tests and challenges from the Rangers' perspective because that's where we're going to go next. We're going to move away for Kelly because, again, I think it will be a challenge, but... It's an interesting challenge for me because it was a challenge if you think back that Gio never really worked out under our previous manager. We couldn't go to a Kelly away or, you know what I'm talking about in terms of, and win consist, consist, <laughs> consistently sorry, away for him. We'd get a win here, draw the next one, win two, draw the next two, win one, get beat on the next one. We couldn't ever figure out and we couldn't ever become consistent away from home and that's what ended up costing us last season and it hurt us especially at the start of this season. So I'm hoping we get to see more of what Beal's already implemented in this team and that is the hard work, the energy and the driving. You look at his results so far in the league and the way places he's went, this is another opportunity for Beal to show just how good of a manager he actually is because again, he's still not got his players in yet people so if he can get a tune at these players it just shows you we've got the right guy in charge until we sprinkle in a couple new pieces so I think it will be very interesting I think it will be very tough but am I going to sit here and say that I didn't expect us to come out here and win this by a couple of goals no and that's not me being um, 
arrogant or anything like that. I believe in the Strangers team and I believe in the manager. So it's on them to go out there and get everybody back on song and show what they can do consecutively. Consecutively? Consistently. I just I can't speak anymore, honestly. It's medication. Alright, is the room spinning for anybody else? No, it's just me. But I guess we'll move on, people, as I slip deeper in to Insani and we move away from what we need today because it's quite clear we need to win. But again, it's the challenge of this. I want to see how he approaches. I want to see what he does with these players. I want to see him come out there. That's what's interesting to a nerd like me. But I want to move away from that and actually get to some injury updates now because there is some bitter pills to swallow people. And I'll probably start with the, the bitterest. If you want, Tom Lawrence has suffered yet another setback, people, and he's going to be out for even longer. Now, this was an injury that was supposed to be three weeks. He was supposed to be back after the World Cup. He, he, he had a setback. He had a setback. And now he's, a, he's had another setback. And that's a real, 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 again, bitter pill to actually swallow. Because if there was one player that was performing, besides the, maybe the likes of Tillman, during the early part of the campaign, along with Kolak, eh, Cholak, sorry, of course, you have our boy Lawrence, who was spectacular, but... Again, man, it just shows you we are cursed right now. One of our best, most influential players, I'd say, on his day, especially what he's shown in a Ranger shot, is out for even longer. And the more this goes on, the more it actually has that to become that this could be an end of season, Joe. But again, we've not got that information yet. He's just issued, um, suffered, sorry, a small setback. Fingers crossed he's back soon, but... As we've not really got any idea when that could be, my worry continues to go with him. And he's not the only one that has definitely ruled out for the game, ladies and gentlemen. Nah, 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 nah. And this shin, I just don't know when it's... I, just when you think you've seen it all, you've said it all regarding Kamar, Kamar Roof, who is officially ruled out of this game with the injury suffered on his comeback game again, where he came on the park show these quality, scored the goal. His goal-to-game ratio at Rangers is genuinely incredible. There is no question in this lad's talent and what he can do in front of goal. Go back and watch the goal versus Aberdeen the new. Please, he starts celebrating the second it leaves his foot. We've not got that part for Cholak in our team. Morelos has never been that player. If he could finish like that, he would have been away a long time ago, people. So there's so much quality there. But, man, all this guy does is play Rangers game, score, and unfortunately get injured, and it's just terrible, people, and you didn't ever like talking about this, and I'll never sit here and make jokes about it either, because it must be dreadful, because Yankee were it, making it to this level is hard than that enough, we've seen so many good players come to Rangers, and they just can't make it, they can't, he can make it, people, he can play at the highest level, but it's his body that stopped him, it's no here, it's no anywhere else, it's it's no, he can't handle the pressure or anything, it's just his body keeps breaking down on him, and it, it's just crap, people, and it actually frustrates the living life of him because he is such a good player, but uh, he has, hasn't suffered a break or any flat or a, a sprain. It's some kind of injury that he had suffered earlier in his career, but on the other side, which is just, it says, also, he's going to get a second opinion on it. Fingers crossed it's not too long. Now, to be fair, it's not expected to be long. He could be even back for the next again game, if we're honest, but they're just wanting to double-check with a lad, and uh, I've seen his Instagram post and everything, like saying how much this time in the last little while has been challenging him, and I just hope the lad gets a wee win, you know what I mean, just just get get some results back, see you're fine, get him back out there and let him actually play, but aye, uh, for updates regarding Kamaru, if you now have got it, and everyone else remains the exact same though, so there is some good news after coming through a battle in 120 minutes, and I faced the game with Aberdeen with challenges flying over. No one else has suffered any other injuries. However, we did find out that Cholak will not be selected for this game as it's come too soon. And they don't want to risk him on the plastic surface. Which is again is when I start to get my issues and that. Because again, I didn't really always get lost in the... I know I made a couple of wee jokes and wee digs about it earlier on in the video. Not, but I didn't sit back and use it as an excuse. Oh... We never played well because it's a plastic pack. I didn't believe in that because there's 11 on 11. There's a ball there. Who actually wants him here? But where I get my problem is where you can't start playing boys on the surface because it might tweak an injury or tweak this or that. That's when I do get my issues. So I, who are best finisher, what I'd say is Cholak and our most composed finisher and Ruth are both not available for the game, leaving us with only Alfredo Morelos in terms of striking options, but of course Sakala able to play there if required. So, aye, he scored a hat-trick before, Morelos, can you please 
day again and that's sort of it regarding the latest team news and everything like that. that's it regarding the injuries again no one else um suitor and um Hadji, of course, are coming back aiming for the St. Johnson game. They came through another successful week of training. Very good. I wouldn't even mind seeing Hadji on the possible bench, but it feels like it's too soon. Might be a week too soon. But the last thing that we, of course, need to discuss, as we've already discussed a couple of times, the transfer news. If you haven't seen my last video, by the way, because I don't know how YouTube will work, maybe it will not show you the other video. Maybe it will just show you this one. Actually, no, I don't know how it actually works. One of the videos is going to get blacklisted because they'll think it's spam, but if you are able to see one, go ahead and check it if you wanted to find out more about Morgan Whitaker, who I do think will become a Rangers player as well during January. But someone who won't be is Tom Davies, as uh, Michael Beale in his press conference confirmed, he will not become a Rangers player. So there is your information. He wouldn't rule out Cantwell, and he wouldn't rule out Whitaker, seeing he likes both players, and I expect both to be here very, very soon. But that's sort of it, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a challenging game tomorrow, but it's a game that this Rangers team is capable of, even if they haven't showed it over the last year. Can Beal have some mere magic and show we were right to put him in by picking up another important three points? We'll find out tomorrow. And the last thing we all need to do is, again, if you are still watching, even though I don't know if you will be, if you don't mind, let me know your predictions down in the old comment section below. That would be absolutely fantastic. I'm going to go... There's been a scoreline in my head, right? And I know it's going to sound ridiculous because everything I've said, and it doesn't sound right at all, right? It's probably going to be 1-0 to Rangers tomorrow. Maybe a 2-1. But I, I just had it in my head, literally almost for the Monday, that I think it's going to end up 3-1 to Rangers tomorrow. So that's what I'm going to go with, ladies and gentlemen. I believe Tillman will have a moment in that game as well. And I'd love to see Alfredo get amongst the goals. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a very, very busy day. Whitaker video and this video. Hopefully you've seen one of them. If you've seen two of them, thank you so much. And again, if you didn't mind leaving some support on the channel with likes and comments, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. And again, if you are new around here, we're closing in on 60k now. So that would be tremendous. But as always, I've been CJ running too. Thank you so much for watching and bye.